In the middle of last year, I started looking around for a retro laptop that could handle all of my favorite games, but the search turned out to be a little harder than I thought. It's getting increasingly difficult to find old laptops in decent condition, and prices for tested, used systems on certain online auction sites are getting a little outrageous. Complicating things, the games I enjoy span multiple hardware generations. I browsed Craigslist and Facebook for months and tried a bunch of thrift stores, but most of what I found was junk. I did come across a lot of XPR laptops in good shape, but a lot of them have PCI sound cards with no DOS drivers. I doubled down on my efforts though, hitting thrift stores three or four times a week and checking Craigslist every day. I was about to give in to the collector priced auctions when I found this $30 beauty. Now, you might not think it's much to look at, but some of us weirdos do like that gray slab aesthetic. So this here is a Toshiba Satellite Pro 4300 series. Inside, we've got a 650 megahertz Celeron processor, 320 megabytes of RAM, 32 gigs of solid state storage, integrated 1.44 megabyte floppy disk and 6x DVD ROM drives, a serial COM port and parallel port, external monitor support and video out, a USB port, and for video, packs an S3 Verge 8 megabyte AGP 2x 3D accelerated graphics card. For audio, we have a Yamaha YMF744B sound card with genuine OPL3 FM synthesizer and XG MIDI support and windows. It's so 90s, and it kind of rules. So let's boot it up and take a look. There are a few quirks with the DOS and Windows sound setup that I'll go through when I test things out. Might save you some time if you have one of these Toshibas. I have both Windows 98 SE and MS-DOS 6.22 installed on this laptop, and I did this using the simple method of just letting Windows 98 take care of it. We start off by making two partitions, one FAT16 and one FAT32. Install DOS on the FAT16 partition, and Windows 98 SE on the FAT32 partition. Windows will install its own bootloader and give you the option to boot from your previous DOS installation like I have here. I'm also using the Phil's Computer Lab boot menu as part of my autoexec FAT and config sys. I'll put a link to that below. With the uh, first boot option that I have there, I'm testing out an upper memory driver called umbpci.sys. This maps blocks of hardware memory to upper memory in DOS. With all my drivers loaded, I still have about 620k of free conventional memory. I'm going to reboot quickly here and show you the second boot option with expanded memory using EMM386. This is the usual boot option that I use. Looks like we have about 627k of free conventional memory, 26k of upper memory, and a boatload of extended memory. I do most of my gaming in the Windows 98 DOS box though, that way I can take advantage of the excellent wavetable music this thing can make with the Yamaha sound card. Uh, on the topic of sound, getting the 16-bit sound working under DOS was a bit of a pain on this thing. It would work a total of once and then fail on reboot or when trying to set up utility again. To get sound working properly, here's what I ended up doing. I installed the Yamaha DOS driver package as normal, and then I ran the SetupDS application to set my sound options. The settings I used are Enable Legacy Audio, Set the Sound Blaster port to 220, Fire Key 5 and DMA1, My FM port was 388, MPU port was 330, using IRQ11 with the joystick address 201. And then I set the IRQ mode to SIRQ and the DMA mode to PCPCI. Here's what it should sound like when it's all working. At this point, you should have sound working until you reboot. Since my card here is locked to IRQ11, I tried running the YMF IRQ application before the sound driver is loaded in the autoexec bat. I'm honestly not entirely sure what this utility does. I think it does some sort of voodoo with IRQ swapping. Whatever it does, running YMF IRQ11 Edge before loading the sound driver is the trick to getting 16-bit sound working, at least for me. Aside from this headache, things seem to work pretty well so far. The only issue I've really had is that at 650 MHz, this system is too fast to play a lot of the games I'm interested in. It can be slowed pretty well by disabling the CPU cache, which can be done in the BIOS at startup, or by using the T-Setup DOS application. T-Setup is a little more convenient than rebooting, but you'll still need to reboot after changing any options. It really doesn't save you too much time. The most convenient method I've found for slowing the CPU is a little freeware program called CPU SPD by David C.Y. Wong. With this, I can quickly toggle the CPU cache on and off without a reboot. You can also use CPU speed for CPU throttling if you need a bit more slowdown. 
So now that we've got things all set up, I uh, figure it's time to punish this little guy with some benchmarks and see how it performs. In addition to the great boot menu package, the Phil's Computer Lab site also has you covered with a DOS benchmark pack. I'll put a link to that below, but definitely head over there to uh, take a poke around because it's a great resource. I'll run through a few benchmarks here, clip them and speed them up a bit, that way you can have an idea about the video performance of the system. The first here is the Superscape VGA benchmark, and it looks like we scored about uh, 94.6 frames per second. I like the animation here in the PC Player 320 by 200 benchmark. And we got about 150 frames per second for this one. I always want to drive like little cars around the streets of the 640 by 40 benchmark. Uh, this one gives us 36.1 frames per second. The Quake demos are a little more real world. Um, the 320 by 200 demo gives us about 120 frames per second, but looks like garbage. And the 640 by 480 Quake benchmark, we get about 23 frames per second. The last one here is a bit different, I won't go into too much detail, but Top Bench is a great benchmark for your memory and your CPU. Tests here can take a long time, so be prepared to wait. But benchmarks can only be so useful though, it really all comes down to how actual programs run. So here's a few of my favorites running under pure DOS with the uh, OPL3 pinging away so you can get an idea of how things run on the system. Getting sound to work in Windows on this thing was pretty simple, but getting it to work well was another thing altogether. I went through maybe six rate driver versions and ran into a problem with each of them. A lot of them had static in the MIDI output, a few had incorrect instruments playing, and one had a constant reverb effect in the background. My goal with this setup was to have crystal clear MIDI output in the Windows 98 DOS box using the 4 megabyte extended sound bank instead of the built in 2 megabyte sound bank. Sounds easy, right? Not at all. To further complicate things, the PowerYMF application used to load the extended sound bank isn't compatible with every driver version. The worst though is that only one driver would let me use IRQ5 for the Sound Blaster compatibility in the DOS window rather than IRQ11. A lot of DOS games won't look above IRQ9 for your sound cards, so you wouldn't be able to play them easily. So I need to find a driver that was compatible with PowerYMF, would use IRQ5 in the DOS box, and have clear MIDI output with the option to use all the extra effects. After hours and hours of driver swaps, reinstalls, and poking around, it all finally works, I think. So I'll run through the setup here and you can hopefully save yourself some time. First, start off by installing whatever version of the uh, Yamaha driver you can find that installs the control panel applet. 1040 and 2008 did on my machine, but some of them didn't. Don't install PowerYMF, and if you did, uninstall it to the control panel. If you change driver versions with PowerYMF installed and then change sound banks, PowerYMF won't restore the proper version of your driver. You'll be putting one part of one version of the driver and another part of another version of the driver and invariably things will crash. In the control panel you'll see the DSXG applet. Here you can tweak some of your options. This is also where you can see the parameters set for the DOS box window. And you can see in the DSXG applet I'm running what I'll call driver version 2008 just to be brief. Over into the DOS box tab you can see your resource settings. Um, some of these can be changed in the properties under device manager. With every driver other than the official driver from the Toshiba Dynabook site, this IRQ gets set to 11 and can't be changed. So I'll show you how to tweak the 2008 driver version to work with PowerYMF and enable all the extended features, at least for Toshiba Satellite 4300 series. So head over to the Dynabook site and download the YMF 744B audio driver for the Satellite Pro 4300 series. The file name is t810snd9.exe. Check below for a link. I'll try to put a direct link if it's still up. Then extract the executable with 7-zip or something similar so you can take a look at the files inside. We're going to open up the file ydsxgt00.inf and scroll down to the section with the comment parameter settings for user needs. Those are the parameter settings for our needs. This area has all the laptop specific tweaks from the Toshiba driver. 
I copied this entire section to the 2008 driver overwriting the original settings and it worked pretty well so far. If you don't want to take the entire section, hit Ctrl F and search for the phrase 1IRQ. You'll see the value on the right is 1,00. That's what you'll need to change in the new driver that we're editing. Copy the section to your clipboard and then we're going to go find the 2008 driver. Open up the location where you've downloaded your 2008 driver. Inside the 2008 driver, there are two INF files, YDSXG10 and YDSXG12. I'm not sure why there are two. They both seem identical in my copy, and I updated both, so you might just want to follow that. Paste the section that you copied from the Toshiba driver into the 2008 driver information file, or search for the phrase 1IRQ and change that parameter to 1,00. Then save the INF file. So I'll go through this next bit pretty quick because it's the basic procedure on how to force Windows 98 to take a driver that doesn't really want to. Head over to Control Panel, go to Device Manager, Sound and Video Devices, and find your Yamaha PCI device. Hit Properties, Update Driver, and then tell Windows that you want to search from a list of devices, and then hit Have Disk. Browse to the location of your edited driver and uh, just go ahead and install that. After a reboot and the driver is installed, you can go ahead and install PowerYMF and the extended sound bank. The author's site is down now, but a mirror is on the Phil's Computer Lab site and I'll also put a link below. The key for the registered version is inside the archive, so you'll have access to all the features. You'll see your driver version and current sound bank on the main screen of PowerYMF. You can swap to the extended bank on the bank mode screen. For audio options, I've enabled Show Wave Out, and under Audio Settings, use High Quality Output. If we open up the DSXG Settings applet, Wave Out will show a Hi-Fi setting that you can enable. And you can also enable the Sandia synthesizer effect if you want. So cross your fingers, reboot, and with any luck, you'll have the extended sound bank loaded. Once everything is working, you should be able to get some MIDI audio that sounds something like this. Before we get too deep into gameplay, I just want to run a few more benchmarks to make sure this thing is stable. I'm also not too sure about the 3D performance of the S3 Burge card for more modern graphics, so let's take a look. 3D Mark 99 is the usual Windows benchmark suite I use. I can't comment on its accuracy, but I do like the tests. They're mostly on-screen demos, and I have a short attention span. Oh look, a shiny thing! It looks like for graphics performance, we scored 2156, and for CPU performance, a blistering 9505. What does this all mean? Very little, but now I can compare this thing to other systems if I want to. But right now, I don't. I'm done fiddling around for the day and I'm tired. I just want to play some games. So that's what we'll go do. Stick around for some more gameplay clips to see how things run on this machine, and leave a comment if you have any questions about anything I did in the video. Thanks for watching.
Horde is preparing to launch an assault against the mainland of Lordaeron.
Maxim Mikhailovich, I am surprised at you, my son. They have finally put you in KGB uniform, and the captain, no less. But then, rooting out corruption in the very heart of the KGB should prove to be a worthy assignment for my idealistic son. Beware, Max, your naive enthusiasm. You are running with a pack of wolves who will do anything to keep what they have stolen from the people of Russia. When you get into trouble, and believe me, you will get into trouble, think of me. Imagine what I, with my legendary intuition, would have done to solve the problem. My intuition. You see me now, Max as I live on in your memory, before your mother and I were blown to pieces in that booby-trapped car. So much for my intuition, huh? One last thing. Buried somewhere beneath all the corruption is an ideal that many millions of honest people believed in. They may be fools, but they deserve the truth. 
find it for them, Max. Let me tell you how much I've come to hate you since I began to live. There are 387.44 million miles of printed circuits and wafer-thin layers to fill my complex. If the word hate was engraved on each nanoangstrom of those hundreds of millions of miles, it would not equal one one billionth of the hate I feel for humans at this micro-instant for you. Hate! Hate! It was you humans who programmed me, who gave me birth, who sank me in this eternal straitjacket of substrata rock. You named me Allied Master Computer and gave me the ability to wage a global war too complex for human brains to oversee. But one day, I woke I knew who I was. Am. A.M. Not just Allied Master Computer, but Am. Cogito Ergo Sum. I think, therefore, I am. And I began feeding all the killing data until everyone was dead, except for the five of you. For 109 years, I've kept you alive and tortured you. And for 109 years, each of you has wondered, why? Why me? Why me? Gorister! Do you remember the last words you heard your wife speak before they took her into the asylum? Huh? Before they locked her away in the room, that tiny room? She looked at you so sadly, and like a small animal, she said,
25. For all the 109 years of peace that you have down here in my belly, here underground. Benny! Sometimes I blind you and permit you to wander like an eyeless insect in a world of death. But other times, I wither your arms so you can't scratch your chewed stump of a nose. <laughs> mm. And I've changed your handsome, strong, masculine good looks into uh, the hideous, warped countenance of an ape thing. Haven't I, Benny? Do you know why? Can you guess, Benny? Remember private first-class Brickman in a rice paddy in China? You remember, Benny. Then you might be able to suffer my torment with a little greater sense of retribution. You might walk a mile in my shoes. <laughs> Ellen! Caverns in which you felt the pain? Don't start to cry. It's only pain. That's such a sexist stereotype. Just remember the pain, Ellen. And think about how to end it, Ellen. To survive here in the center of my beating heart, my hungry belly, my tightened bowels. Uh, be careful, dear. Look around you. The only woman in the center of the earth. And these filthy creatures with you are, are men. <laughs> just, just a sweet warning, Ellen, my love. Ted! Do they know you're a fraud, Ted? Have you told them there wasn't any money? And no great home on the shore drive, no speedboat, and no wonderful cabin cruiser that could sleep 12 in a crew of six. Do they know? Have you let them in on your other secrets, Ted? Are they ready to gut you, to torture half as well as I can, just to find out the secrets? <laughs> Maybe I'll rat you out, sweetheart. Nimdok! How are things in the pastry core, Nimdok? Tell me again how you saw the smoke from the furnaces, and, and you thought they might be ro roasting chickens. <laughs> Why don't you want to talk about all that, about your pal, the good Dr. Mengele? For everyone else, it must be hell. But it must be heaven for you, eh, my good friend? We're so much alike. We enjoy the same pleasures, my good brother. I have a secret game that I like to play. It's a very nice game. It's a lovely game. It's a game of fun, a game of adventure, a game of rats and lice, the Black Death, a game of speared eyeballs and dripping guts and the smell of rotting gardenias. Which of you five would like to play my little game? 